Hello, hello, hello. How are you guys doing today? Hello, Mr. Boo Radley. Um, this is a video that I was actually gonna just film in my car last night because I pulled into the driveway and I was just kind of like thinking to myself, you know, and, um, but kind of talking to myself in my head at the same time. And so I took some notes just about my thoughts, which I do like on a regular basis. It's crazy. Um, I don't know if you guys do this or not, or if I'm the only one, maybe I'm the only crazy one out there. I literally take notes on everything. And, um, in my phone, I have 357 current notes. And so I took these notes last night and I was like, you know what? I'm just going to film it tomorrow because I love filming these videos just sitting on the bed with the dogs talking. These have become some of my favorite videos that I've made. But I wrote in my notes last night, I was like, who am I talking to when I talk in my head? I, I, I feel like I go through the day and I'll like, it, like I talk out, I talk to the dogs, <laughs> you know, but sometimes like, you know, I'll just like say stuff out loud to myself. Um, and I know that I'm not talking really to any person. And so I was like, anyway, I was taking these notes and it said, or, or I wrote, who am I talking to? Maybe I'm talking, um, I talk to myself or I guess I talk to my dogs. Maybe my mom, I don't know. And the reason I said this was because like sometimes when I'm talking, I'll say, like, mom, I had a really good day today. Or I'll say, you know, like, mom, wish me luck. Or, you know, mom, I wish you were here because I think you would be proud of me. Or something like that. Like, I talk directly to my mom often. Um, and, and I don't think that's weird at all. I don't think that that's strange, you know. I do feel my mom's presence around me. Um, and I am somebody that is very much a believer in an afterlife and a, a spiritual world. And, um... I also do have a higher power, and that was what I was kind of wanting to talk about today. And you know, so anyway, I, I wrote down here. I talk to myself, or I guess I talk to my dogs. Maybe my mom. I don't know. Maybe I'm talking to God. We're so scared of that word, God. I was scared of it forever. I'd put anything in my body and trust the outcome, but I wasn't willing to accept that maybe some power greater than myself could make me feel differently. And um. You know, I don't know why I was thinking about this late last night. You know, I had just watched this episode of Euphoria. So many people recommended for me to watch the show Euphoria. And so I started watching it and um, it's really dark. It's very, very dark. <clears throat> and it has a lot to do with addiction. And honestly, I'm only three episodes in. My husband's like five, six episodes in. So he knows more than me. But I'm only like three episodes in. So I don't know what turns it takes and stuff. But in the third episode, there's a scene when she, uh, the main character goes to get a coin, um, for her 60 day sobriety of which she's not really sober 60 days. And it's interesting because she talks about how she has been doing well though, and she doesn't want to let anybody down. And so she gets the coin anyway, which I think is such a truism for a lot of people that have relapsed in recovery. Um, and so, you know, I've had a lot of friends that are in similar situations and whatever. I've had a lot of friends of mine that are like, I've taken so many start over tokens. A start over token is when you re relapse and you come back in. I've had so many friends of mine that have been like, I've taken so many start over tokens. I'm not taking any anymore, you know? Um, and I'm like, no, you, you got It's a fresh start, you know? And this is for you and this is for other people to witness as well. But there was a scene after that when this guy comes up to her. And, um, he's, he goes through all of the people that we hurt, you know, as addicts, as active addicts and alcoholics. And he's talking about her little sister who found her when she had overdosed. And he said, and then you have, you know, the nerve to come in here and stand up in front of people that are really trying to get help for this and lie about being sober. And she's basically like, how do you know? But like, you know, like, uh, I mean, addicts, no addicts. Like you, you can't fool each, you know, we can't fool each other. So it was this very interesting scene to me, you know? And it reminded me so much of um, kind of the beginning of what I would call my God journey. It's just so you know, if you haven't watched my other channels, I'm not a religious person. I consider myself a highly spiritual person, but I don't pertain to any one religious belief. 
but I'm highly supportive of people that do if their religious beliefs um, are not sanctimonious or are not hurtful to other people or groups of people. And so, like, my mother was a woman of very strong faith and was very involved in her church. And I was raised in that church, and I, and we went to a Lutheran church when I was growing up, and I had no animosity towards that church. There was, I mean, they were very accepting of, you know, a, a LGBT community and things like that. And I think, in fact, they were one of the first churches in Indianapolis, where I live, um, that were that accepting. And so it wasn't like I came from this horrible religious background. Um, my mom, the church that she went to in Indianapolis and the church that she was married in, she always took pride in this, was the first church in Indianapolis to have a gay wedding. Um, so it wasn't like I grew up having all of this negative religious, you know, ideology around me. And, um, in fact, my parents were very supportive of me wanting to read about Buddhism or Hinduism when I was like in high school and middle school and buying me the books. You know, I can remember my mom, like she was very interested in that as well. And, um, so like buying me the books and <clears throat> I can even remember one time my dad, like I was, I had seen the movie live and let die The So I got very obsessed with, um, uh, tarot cards and my dad bought me tarot cards and you know, sat down and we talked about it and all this kind of stuff. And it was like, they were very open to me looking at things and, and I, I feel so blessed that I had parents that were willing to do that, you know, and take the time to sit down with me. And then I got into, you know, high school and I was using and whatever. And, um, and it's so interesting watching this girl, um, uh, Rue is her character's name in Euphoria. She reminds me very much of myself when I was that age. And um, just wanting to numb myself, just wanting to numb the pain and um, and being very aware of that as well. Like, I think there's a lot of addicts and alcoholics that don't know what they're doing or why they're using, but I was very aware that that was a huge part of it, you know, and I, and, um, and just didn't want to feel really anything, you know, and um, so anyway, but I became very oppositional to any kind of like God concept. And, um, you know, if anybody said anything to me about God, I was like, you're Bible thumping, you're Bible thumping. And I think it was this immediate idea, um, you know, we're in a different place than we were 30 years ago when I came out, 31 years ago, you know, well, almost 32 years now, because I came out um, on my 18th birthday in 1990. So, you know, 32 years ago, it was a different world, and um, there was a lot of religious ideology against gay people being bad and things like that, you know? And I think, to some degree, that scared me, or I fed into that, and so I was so resistant to any kind of God idea that if anybody talked to me about God... Um, that I would just be like, oh, you're a Bible thumper. And in fact, I can remember being in high school and people talking about, like, they, like, the high school that I went to had a really heavy, like, uh, there was a church in the area that was, like, had a really strong youth group. And I can remember these kids coming to school and being like, Jesus Christ this and whatever, you know? And I can remember being like, there's no way they believe this, you know? Like, how how is this even possible? Because I had never internalized on any level any kind of spiritual belief whatsoever. And in fact, I can remember reading that book, She Said Yes, I think it's called, about, um, at Columbine, and the girl that, uh, one of them looked underneath the table and they said, do you believe in God? And she said yes, and they shot her. And, um, and I, you know, that story was, I can remember reading that years later. I don't know when I read that, but like years, like 10 years sober or something like that. And it had such a profound effect on me because I thought to myself, like, I don't know. And at that time, I, I did believe in God. I don't know that. Like, I was like, would you say that with a gun pointed to your face? You know, kind of an interesting question. But I've always kind of had this resistance to God. And, like, even in my Peterisms videos, like, I kind of steer around it when I'm, like, reading meditations and things like that. But the thing that's funny is that I talk about God moments all the time. I talk about, like, if, if you have conversations with me, again, like, you know, with my best friend, or with even with my husband. My husband's an atheist, you know? And we've made our relationship work for 13 years with my husband being an atheist and myself being a highly spiritual person. And um, and the way that I look at spirituality is of the soul. Um, you know, one of the recovery sayings that we say is that religion is for people that are afraid of going to hell and spirituality is for people that have already been there. And I don't know if that's true or not, but I like that. Um, you know, and uh, but it was a long journey for me. And um, when I started, I can remember that I... Like, I wasn't willing to commit that I 
I always kind of believed in something. I, I just thought there's no way that they're the, we're the only ones. Like there's no way that, you know, when you see a little dog or whatever, like that that just is happenstance, you know, and that this dog that has personality, there's no way that that's just, that it just happened, right? But I was so unwilling to believe anything. And yet, and, I, and this came to me when I was watching the show last night, and yet I was willing to put any substance into my body to make me feel some way differently, to change how I felt. You know, I was so afraid of this word God or this word higher power, right? Like, I was so terrified of that word that I didn't want to say it. I thought it was corny. I thought, oh, if you act like you're a spiritual religious person whatsoever, then that's like, oh, whatever. Because I had never had any internalized feeling of what that was like. I had never had any internalized feeling. And the only way that I can explain it is because... I think some of my most spiritual moments have been driving through the night out in the country in late August with the windows down, blasting Bob Dylan. And for me, like, that is such a spiritual moment. I feel like I'm connected to God in that moment with the moon, the full moon shining, and, you know, the, the light over the field. And I feel every bit of essence of any kind of God that created this world. And for me, that's a very spiritual moment. I had never internalized anything like that. I had never felt any kind of God moment. I had never had any moment of peace and serenity. You know, I was filled with toxicity and negativity, and I was just angry and miserable all the time and fearful. I was so fearful all the time, you know? But I was willing to put whatever pill, drink, or drug into my body to change the outcome, but I could not for one second get around this idea that maybe some kind of belief in a higher power could kind of change that, you know? And I remember even in early sobriety, um, <laughs> being with my sponsor, you know, and the second step is, um, I came to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity. A power greater than ourselves. It doesn't say any kind of religious God or religious higher being. Just a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity. Couldn't cure all of our problems. Could restore us to sanity, right? And the, thir the third step is made a, uh, made a decision to turn our life and our will over to the care of God as we understood him. And that's our, under as we understood him or her or it or whatever, right? And I can remember like really struggling with this because I was like, if I'm going to get behind this God concept kind of thing, then I have to really believe something. And I had had early on, I don't know how long I had been sober, but I went to this meeting. It was this old Friday night meeting that I used to go to and everybody got real dressed up. It was like meet the boyfriend, meet the girlfriend kind of meeting, you know? And I can remember they were talking about something spiritual in the meeting and I got up and I walked back to the back of the room and lit a cigarette and I was standing back there. And this woman came back to me, and I can remember her walking up, and I was like, oh, God. And um, she said, uh, she introduced herself to me, and I like, put my hand out. She goes, oh, oh, oh no, ba no, baby, we hug at these meetings. And I was like, okay. And she said, why'd you leave the meeting? And I said, um, they were talking about God, and I didn't really want to hear it. Like, I don't need anybody Bible thumping to me. And she goes, is that what you heard? And I said, yeah, because that's what they were talking about. She said, take what, they, take what you like and leave the rest. I never heard anything like that before. I never understood that I had the ability to believe in what I wanted to believe in. That it that didn't have to be any uniformed doctrine, but that I could believe in what I wanted to believe in, what it made sense for me. And one of those things that I really struggled with was that God could love me because I was gay. And, you know, it's so interesting because at the time, I really, really struggled with this idea that I was using drugs or alcohol because I was gay. Like, my counselor said it to me when I was in treatment. You know, it came up and other, like, my counselor, after I got out of treatment, I mean, it was something that we talked about on a regular basis. I was like, no, 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 I've always been fine with being gay. What's so interesting is, in retrospect, I know for a fact that one of the reasons, one of the main reasons that I used was because I was gay and I was scared of it. And I was scared of embracing it. And, and that's why today I consider myself a proud gay man. Because it took me a long time to get to the proud part, you know? And so I am proud today. That's that's why when you hear about like straight pride and all that kind of stuff, I'm like, you know, you work through some of the issues that some of us work through and then you talk to me about all that. You know, like I, I really had to work to some, through some stuff to get to the point where I could say that I was proud of being a gay man. You know, just like similar things that I'm proud of in my life today. And so, uh, like my recovery. And so, but you know, it was interesting and I can remember working with my sponsor on these steps at that time and he got so frustrated because I had to have this concrete idea of what God was, you know? And, um, 
And I can remember he said to me, because it says this in the book, he said, God either is or he isn't. He was like, he slammed the book down. He goes, God either is, and he either is or he isn't. I was like, he is, he is, you know, because I didn't know, but I was like, I'll just say whatever, you know, to move on. And he said, this is what we're going to do. He said, can you believe that something, he, she, it, blah, 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 whatever, is out there that is bigger than you? And I said, yeah. And he said, when you're in the woods, if a huge tree falls, can you pick up that tree and carry it by yourself? And I said, no. And he said, if you cut it up into little pieces, can you pick it up and carry it? And I said, yes. And he goes, your higher power is going to be the person, you know, that with this tree cutting thing. So <laughs> I thought that was interesting because later I had a friend of mine who has since passed away. And we were in its aftercare group. And um, he was a painter and an artist. He was real different, really neat guy. He actually, he hated the word artist because he sculpted rocks. And he'd say he just pounded rocks. And um, he and I were like really, really close, close friends. And he died of a brain aneurysm many years ago. And um, I can remember sitting in aftercare. And we were having this discussion about a higher power. And he could just couldn't get behind it. You know, he had been one of... Uh, he had been in a biker gang and he had done some really horrific things. And he was like, there's no God that's going to ever forgive me of that. And, um, not that all biker gangs are horrible, but the one he had been, he had participated in some things that he didn't believe were forgivable. And I can remember we were sitting in there and we were in our, in our aftercare group and our counselor said something about the tree outside the window. And she said, can you make a tree? And he goes, no. And she, he goes, oh, oh okay. And he goes, then I guess my God is the guy that makes trees. And he would always say that. And I love that so much, you know. Because none of us know, you know. When people get upset when I say I have a higher power or it's a culmination of different beliefs. Because my higher power is a culmination of, you know, an overpowering idea of kindness, compassion, love, forgiveness, and understanding. You know, people go, that doesn't make any sense. It doesn't fit any religion, you know. And it's like, well... Maybe it doesn't, and maybe I'm not sure yet of what, uh, where I belong, you know? And, and I'm still looking, I guess. And um, so I think that, um, but, you know, I keep on coming back to the idea that I was willing to put anything in my body, but I wasn't willing to try to put, you know, some kind of spirituality or God into my body at that time and, and really... Um, hold on to some idea that maybe there's something out there that's bigger than me, you know? And I do feel that. I do believe that today. And I've had many, many God moments. I've had so many moments of serendipity and just, um, I don't believe in coincidence a lot. And so it's strange when things happen, you know, and good things. And for me, God moments are when good things happen or opportunities open or growth moments happen. And you're like, God, this is, this is a God moment, you know, or like, you know, <laughs> when miracles occur and, and I am a believer in prayer and, you know, and, um, but I find myself talking out loud even at times. And I think I'm talking to God, but I think I'm still, there's that part of me that's like, you know, if I'm around my friends in recovery, that this is the language that we talk, then I don't have a problem saying that. But with a lot of other people, I would never have that conversation. And, you know, this is kind of like me um, saying this is something I feel like I need to talk about on my channel because I think there are so many people that we're afraid of that word, you know? We're afraid of what that word means. We're afraid of our histories to that word. I have so many friends of mine, you know, I can say that I have no ne negative experiences with religion personally, other than, you know, the Westboro Baptist Church or something like that get with their signs or whatnot. But I've had friends of mine that have had very negative experiences in churches growing up and things like that. And I can't take that experience away from them, you know? Um, and each of us is on our own journey. And each of us is on our own journey. So I don't know who I'm talking to. Maybe I'm just talking because I like to hear myself talk. <laughs> That's probably closer to the truth. I like to think that the dogs know what I'm saying, you know? That the dogs understand me. But I don't know if they do or not. Do you understand me, Boo Radley? Do you know what I'm saying? Love you guys. I'll see you tomorrow.